and gentlemen, it is absolutely privilege. I'm sat down now with multi-award winner, Grammy winner, you name it. He has got the awards. It is the master himself. It is Steve Vai. How are you doing, my friend? Doing great. Nice to be with you, bro. Oh, it's brilliant just to be sat down with you. And I just want to say congratulations on the singles that are being dropped right now. Music is fine. The energy is good. How is it your end? Well, it's a surprise. Um, it's 30 years old. So tell me okay. about the album. How did it all come about? Yeah, it was uh, kind of odd the way it happened, you know. I started, it was always a motorcycle. I was a fan of Harleys and one of my kid i was a fan of like motorbikes and mini bikes and that kind of stuff and my brother had a harley and he hung out with this rough rough crowd you know and i just love these guys big partiers fighters but real warm hearts but i could never afford a harley and when i moved to california uh, when i was 20 i had a little motorcycle and i got around then i joined dave roth's band and i couldn't ride a bike for many years and then finally I, I when I left him, I realized I could go and buy Harleys, and I got a Harley and I started riding with some friends. And one of them was uh, John Sombrato, and John was from uh, New York. He's a tough Italian biker guy from New York, and his story is pretty incredible. He, uh, when he was 21, he had climbed these high tension wires, and the electricity uh, arced and went through his body, Oof. and ended up. He ended up. Uh, falling 60 feet onto a barbed wire fence and he caught fire. Jeez. 60% of the body was just burnt and all gashed up, you know, and uh, his, but his face was fine. You know? And he miraculously survived this. And when he came out to California, we started hanging out and riding bikes together. I didn't know that he could sit, you know, mm -hmm. and we have so much fun with our, you know, our girls and our friends and everything going on these major bike rides. Um, I wanted to write some music that we could listen to when we were riding our bikes because, like, I had beakers on it and stuff. And I dropped everything I was doing, and I jumped into the studio, and I ripped this record out really quick, like a week. It was more like just something for us to have, you know? Yeah. And uh, it, when it came time to put the vocals on it, I didn't have anybody at the time. So I tried singing it myself, and that was an abysmal disaster because <laughs> I don't sing rock and roll, you know? And I didn't know that John could sing. And, and John's name at the time, we called him Gash. That was his preferred nickname because just the way he looked, you know, yeah. he was all gashed up. And uh, <clears throat> I would hear him occasionally kind of like spout out a little vocal line. And I kept thinking, my gosh, this sounds like there's a voice in there, a really good one. So I put him in the studio and basically – told him what to sing, and I couldn't believe what I what came out of his mouth. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I've worked with a lot of lead singers, you know? Yeah. So much. Uh, and, and the thing that he had that was so interesting is, you know, there's this, like, DNA that exists in musicians. You know, that sometimes you hear it, it's called, like, the guitar player syndrome or lead singer syndrome or the drummer syndrome, you know? Everybody has, has these kind of quirky uh, personalities that exactly. make them very suited they're doing but a lead singer man that's a specific kind of dna uh -huh. i know a lot of great lead singers but you know a rock star is a different breed you know these people are extroverted they've a vision they've, they've got all of these tense confidence and i've had the great privilege to work with some of the world's best you know rock star lead front evan yeah. uh, dave roth David Coverdale, Zappa, Graham Bach. The I list mean, is long. Guys, it's something, <laughs> yeah, it's long. It goes on and on. Ozzy and everybody, you know. So when it, when Gash came along, the, the, the thing that was so interesting, his personality had that DNA in it. Fades. I couldn't believe it. He, you'd have to know him. It was so uh, unpredictable, funny, intense, uh, ch charming, crazy. You know, all these things. And uh, he, everybody loved him. He was the kind of guy where you, you walk, he walks in a room and, you know, you, he commands attention and he doesn't even try. It's just one of those things. Yeah. So he was a, a great friend. And I couldn't believe his voice on this record. And we had it and we listened to it when we were riding our bikes and it was fantastic. I was in the middle of another project called Sex and Religion and I... My plan was to work on that and finish and go through that cycle. 
then uh, you know flesh out a few more songs with Dash, and because I only ca- captured eight songs with him. But he was he was a wild man. I mean, if you look at the record cover and you uh-huh. flip it over to the back, the picture of Dash riding his motorcycle, he's sitting on the back seat of his butt, turned around backwards, flipping pe- flipping the bird, you know, and. <laughs> He just did outrageous thing, you know. It was the perfect that sort of personality for the lead singer rock star thing. But in 97, when I was going to start resuming work, he was in a fatal bike accident, killed. Yeah. And this was devastating. It just devastated us. And I was so disheartened, I just put the project on the shelf for 30 years. Jesus. That's yeah. a long and, time. And now I- now I'm doing it. Yeah, it's a long time. It is. I've got to, I've got to say, Steve, you could have released this any time in those 30 years. Do you think because you went down the path that you've gone down as a musician and, and it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger and you've been, you know, you've been involved in everything, you know, geez, you've been given keys to cities, you've, you've played everywhere, you've got all these stunning albums. Do you think that's one of the reasons why you can this or was it just something that you didn't feel that was quite up to scratch what needed to be released and then you finally got the brave wave and thought, okay, let's do it now. Well, what was the reason? Well, it's kind of all that stuff. Yeah. Back in... After I recorded it, um, after John passed away, I, I just felt defeated. Not not that the music was so important, but he was so important in our life, you know. Mm. And I just turned my back on it, and I figured I, I'm not going to release this because it's like throwing it to the wolves in a sense. You got to remember, this is the '90s, and grunge just came in, and uh, it the record just felt too personal and too precious to. He said, mm. That sounds weird. I'm like, you know, I got all this other stuff. I'll really that people uh, don't, they're not, they wouldn't care about a record like this because it's not contemporary. And, um, but then through the years, probably about 10 years after that, I started listening to it more and more and more. And then for a few decades, I, I just started feeling I, I, I should release this because it'll be a nice little snapshot into a part of my past or those that are interested in that. Because, you know, mm-hmm. every artist has a few people that will just collect everything they do, you know? Exactly. And this is a great, great little offering because it's so different than my catalog. So I started telling myself, you should mix this and put it out. You know, that was probably 20 years ago. But, you know, projects keep coming and you keep moving on and you keep moving on. And I knew that I could release it, but I can't, I'm not going to tour with it. You know, I, I can't tour on this record. But yes, you can find a singer. You can find a singer that can sing it, but then there's nobody like him. They're, mm. they're not. It, it's so hard to to find a lead rock singer that has the goods. You know, uh, that really has all the components in place. And uh, so I just never really. I, it was just a pet project that. that but I never woke up one day and said, okay, I'm going to mix that record now. <laughs> Until finally, last year, I woke up and I said, you're not going to mix that record. Get somebody to mix it. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Mike Frazier, my great mixer, and he mixed the record. And now it's here. And I think it's good timing for it because uh, it's, you know, I've been doing a lot of press on this record. I'm so surprised at how well this little record is being received. Yeah. Hard, hard people are telling me it's their favorite record of the year. So I'm like, what? It, it confirms my suspicions that it's a great record. <laughs> you know, it's just uplifting. You know, it's it's rock and roll in the, the way that I've always wanted to kind of hear it uh, in that free form kind of a way that uh, it captures that feeling of uh, that freedom of riding a motorcycle and also the freedom of just playing rock and roll, you know, like being a guitar player and playing that kind of rock and roll. So I wanted that record to be straight ahead, no frills, no filler shit. Oops, sorry. No, no filler know. stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, no big long guitar solos with, you know, wanky noodling or anything. Uh-huh. I just wanted straight ahead, rock and roll, great melody, pounding, uplifting, feel good and that's what it is 
Oh, it, it, it is. And, and it's so upbeat as well. And like you've said, you, you you recorded this over 30 years ago and you can definitely feel that kind of 90s feel-good music I call the 90s, the feel-good music. And, and there's a lot of yeah. great music if you dig deep uh, from the 90s onwards, as we've seen all these great artists who have come out and all these super groups. Are you the kind yeah. of uh, artist that has to be creating constantly and on the road or do you like to take time away and let everything digest a little bit well i kind of move with my hands yeah you know in everybody's life they got also we'd all have responsibilities so i have to delegate time for you know business i i, I spend more time these days with family but i am a um an overachiever so to speak <laughs> <laughs> so, i'm always working you know yeah yeah it's it's really cool how you are and People, again, the one thing I like about the record, what you've done about bringing it out now, and you go, you know, it's old. It's an old record, like you've said. But for the new generation, if that's their first record, what they pick up and go, wow, and then discover a Steve Vai of what your catalogue is, do you think that's a good way for every artist, you know, these days, maybe, you know, to put out some of the old recordings that never got released as albums? You know, would you say that's a cool thing to do nowadays? It's a, it, I- up to the artist and what they, yeah. what they have and how they want to represent themselves. I I, I, uh, I did great with the, the uh, Gash record because I didn't have any particular goals of greatness for it, you know? Yeah. I didn't have all the records I've met with all the bands I've played with. There's committees involved, you know? Oh, there's labels. Yeah. Have a, there's 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 A&R people. There's the other musicians. There's the producers, the engineers. It's like a committee. You can't, you don't just, you can't just do what you want. You know, you have to answer and, and be a part of a cooperative component of a mass group of people. Yeah. With this get record, I went into the studio, shut the door, and no one was allowed in. You know, it was just me and what I wanted. That's, that's a, uh, fulfilling i that's what i suggest every artist do now now if they're in a situation and it, it could be a very good one with a band with the, whatever where there's a committee involved that's fine but i highly recommend that you take time to just be brutally creative in the most unique way you can because that's your gift you know? uh-huh. and when you do that you feel fulfilled in a way that nothing else can offer and this isn't just for guitar players, it's for everybody. You know, there's something in everybody that has a creative impulse to it that feels natural to them. You have to express that or it leads you it leads to depression, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just lucky I was I ripped that record out. It was like a little for me at least, a little hidden treasure. Uh-huh. Because it was so authentic, you know. I didn't answer to anybody. And that's it. What a beautiful way to do something, though, Stephen. And then it gets the juices flowing, doesn't it? It really just brings back the smile, I guess, and thinks, unless you're an artist, you don't understand. It, 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 it's like a, a reborn thing. I don't know if you want to go spiritual, but it's definitely something that's inspired, especially with the whole story behind it. Vine Gash is just superb. It's great stuff. What is your plans, though, for 23 onwards? You know, Are you going to hit the road in... What's the, what's the plans? We did a European tour and an American tour last year. And the next month, uh, actually March, um, I'm back out in Eastern Europe for a couple of months. And then I'm in America again for a couple of months. And then it's Mexico and South America. And then we go to uh, the rest of the world, like Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, Indonesia, Jakarta, Singapore, Singapore uh, Japan. China, oh. Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't wait. Looking forward to it. Oh, it's great. And, and I've got to say, everywhere you go, the, the crowds are there, the new generation are, are, are around, and it's a great thing that your music still lives on, and you can just hit the social medias and absolutely get destroyed by watching your mem- mesmerizing work. And and, it, and it's a great thing that there's still yeah. somebody like yourself around, and, you know, God bless his soul, we recently uh, lost Jeff Beck, and I've got to say, you know, was you a kind of artist growing up that used to admire that kind of artist of Jeff Beck, you know, who he was, what he standed for? Because he was pretty similar to you with his shows, instrumentals, beautiful. You know, did he have an impact on you? Is the sun hot? 
<laughs> you know, when I was young, blow, you know, blow by blow count, that would it, it was a miracle. And all of his, he was always there, all involved and always just doing miraculous things. The man was a miracle, you know. He's the only guitarist I know of that continued to evolve and was at his, at his, one of his peaks, one of his creative peaks at 78 years old. Yeah. Come on. You know, and like, that's a, a, a special kind of a ins inspiration. And uh, I've never heard anybody reach that point where the physicality starts to dissolve a bit because you know, musicians have to grapple with age uh -huh. and continue, continue to evolve and, um, and just play and tour and continue to make beautiful music. And he's the only, you know, when I hear a guitar player, any guitar player, I, I in my mind, I know what they're doing because I'm a guitar player. Uh -huh. I, I can see it. And when I, but Jeff Beck, maybe, maybe with the exception of Jeff and Alan Holdsworth, I hear, I hear what he's doing, but I don't know how he's doing it. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to touch the instrument and have those miraculous sounds and tones come out in such a, a, a bulletproof way you know mm -hmm. just i'm so I, I you know when i heard of his passing i of course i was stunned and gutted like like anybody and then i just i couldn't stop thinking about him like all of us the more i thought about him the, just the more joy i felt yeah you no know, just the appreciation and the gratitude i mean it's, it's just amazing that whole life Mm -hmm. to guide you and uh he really delivered man he really delivered. and 78 hope i'm yeah. pissed off at him <laughs> going until we're 78 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's unbelievable you know just oh, the whole sound of that guy is just great and i actually asked the question because again he was an artist again what toured and did me you know it was instrumental stuff like yourself and for some reason, that, that music just touches you. Even yours, Steve, you know, it's just you get oh, lost yeah, yeah. in the music, you know. It really is something so unique. And I've just got to touch on it before we do wrap it up. Your songwriting, do you have just something in your head lyrically first or is it musically with the, you know, the guitar or do you hear a sound, a bird sing? I don't know. What influences you to just get kick these songs out? Anything, you know, you keep you are out for anything that, yeah. and most of the time it's a I create a I create a visualization of something, and then I my ear tells my fingers what to do. Unbelievable! <laughs> <laughs> it's a great way of summing it up. It's it's difficult to talk about Jeff Beck and me in the same sentence. I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say you're one of the most down to earth musician rock stars there. You name it, award winner. You, you just are, and I guess that's another thing. What just rubs off on all these musicians? What adore you? You know, you stand up for something. Many people want to follow you. You know, you're just unbelievable in that right. You know, it's great stuff. And again, I've got to praise you on this uh, this album. It's it's it, it's. It's upbeat, you know, you whack it on, you go with it, and it's just such a feel good. You know, Vigash is out, you know, on the CD, digital, end of January, vinyl, you know, and the, it's out in February in the vinyl, and, and it's going to be great. Check it all out on the social media pages. And if there's one little, I don't know, one little message you could pass on, what would it be? Just to uplift us. Well, give it a, give it a shot uh, with an open mind and feel the energy of it. And I think that. Uh, record will speak for itself <laughs> oh, it's beautiful I've got to say thank you for sitting down we could talk for hours you know but you know we don't want to give too much away you want the people to go and check it all out and, and, and just check your story out and it is it's just been a privilege to sit down with you ladies and gentlemen it's Steve Vai thank you so much for taking the time to sit down we had a great oh. chat you know before this and it's it's an absolute uh, privilege just to be here with you well thank you brother you're, you're very good to me <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it Thank mm -hmm. you.